Today we're going to learn how to graph inequalities on a number line. When you're graphing inequalities on a number line, you need to shade the area that makes the inequality true. Anytime that the boundary is a solution, you use a closed dot at the boundary. That means you're going to take your circle and you're going to fill it all the way in. You're going to use an open dot at the boundary if the boundary is not a solution. So you just have a circle like this. We're going to go ahead and look at a couple short examples. You might be asked to graph the inequality x is less than 5. So you're trying to show on the number line all the values that are less than 5. When I see your number lines, I really like you to make sure you include the number 5, which is the boundary. Sometimes it's nice to include a number larger and a number smaller than 5. And I like you to include 0 somewhere on your number line. It's up to you if you want to include intermediate values like 3, 2, 1, maybe go into the negatives. That's up to you, but you need to at least show 5, 0, probably 1 less and 1 greater than 5. So we're trying to show x is less than 5, so shade in everything on the number line where x is less than 5. So the first thing I do is I look at the boundary. The boundary is 5. 5 is not less than 5. 5 is equal to 5, so it gets an open circle, an open dot. If I look on the number line, the numbers to the left of 5 are the ones that are left of less than 5, so I'll be shading left. So I draw this arrow to the left. Technically it's supposed to be on the number line. And to show up, sometimes you kind of have to scribble a lot or shade in. But we're going all the way to the left. All the numbers here are less than 5. If you want to do a quick check, you can check some numbers in that area, like 4. 4 is less than 5. That's true. Um, negative 2 is less than 5. That's true. All of these numbers work. If you try something on the right, like 6, and you say 6 is less than 5, that is not true. So it should not be shaded. Okay, a second example, this one is graph x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So again, I want you to start and make sure you include negative 3. And maybe go negative 4, negative 2. I'll just continue going negative 1, 0. 1, get a few numbers in here, to 2. And then I want to graph all the numbers that are greater than or equal to negative 3. So this time I have my boundary at negative 3. Negative 3 is greater than or equal to negative 3 because negative 3 equals negative 3. So on negative 3, I'm going to close in my circle, fill in that dot. Numbers that are bigger than or greater than negative 3 are to the right of negative 3. So like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So my arrow is going to go to the right of negative 3 and all the way because every number out here to the right is bigger than negative 3. Again, if I wanted to check some of those values that are over there, like 0 is bigger than negative 3, true. 2 is bigger than negative 3, true. If I try that one on the left, negative 4 is not bigger than negative 3, so that doesn't work. Okay. All right, let's do a brief check for understanding. So this is a good time for you to pause the video, and I want you to answer these two questions, write them in your notes, and then come back to check if you're right. So I've drawn two inequalities on a number line, and I want you to see if you can figure out what inequality is being represented here. So problem A, if you did that, you should notice that 4 is the boundary, and it's shaded in, so 4 is included. So notice, 4 included. All the numbers to the right of 4 are being represented with shading into an arrow, so we're looking at the numbers that are larger than or equal to 4. If you put x is greater than or equal to 4, that's correct. On B, if you notice, the good clue there is it's not shaded in. It's an open circle, so negative 7 is not included. And it looks like everything to the left of negative 7 is shaded. So here we're looking at values where x is less than negative 7.